Coach Norvell was complimenting the, the communication on the back end uh, and the secondary. Um, earlier this year, you know, you guys did have some breakdowns there. Is is that just normal just to see that development over the course of a season, or have these guys done a particularly good job of, of that? Yeah, I mean, it's normal to improve, you know, and I've stated before, um, you know, we're playing two nickels, four safeties, three corners. That's the most we've played. Um, obviously, not everyone's playing as much as the others, but, you know, that takes time, you know, and if we were put on the field even early in the season, we believed in them, um, but I thought just the more we've gotten reps with each other and the comfortability of guys playing with each other, I think that has helped the process. Um, but you know, I was proud of those guys. Obviously, to limit them in the throw game uh, was a big part of the plan. Kind of going off that, can, can you put into like terms that we would understand like how much communication is going on amongst the defensive backs or linebackers before any given play? I guess it depends on the call and the formation sometimes, you know. Um, you can sit there and say you need to talk every play, uh, but there's talking to talk, then there's actual information that needs to be given. Um, and typically the linebackers have a lot of the communication with the front. The safeties are the glue that connects the perimeter players with the interior players. Sometimes the defensive ends are involved in that too because they could be involved in a coverage or the way they have to rush to know where the coverage is going to be. So, you know, splits, sometimes motions make it um, more important or more critical uh, with the timing of things. Uh, splits matter, like even this week going up the pit, I mean, the, the numbers are different because it's a pro field. So, like, you know, just simple things that you're trying to get your guys accustomed to here early in the week as far as splits. But, you know, there's – in order to have good communication, you've got to have clear and concise and direct speaker, but you need a listener too. And, you know, that goes to multiple people. Everybody's got to hear it the same way, see it the same way. So, you know, it's just part of playing connected defense. Looking at the stats, Renardo Green was targeted eight times in that game. Um, what did he do specifically, you know, the two – PBUs. Um, when he was targeted that many times, like, what do you say to the um, defensive back? And like, what was, what was his mentality that game? Go pick the ball off. <laughs> I mean, you know, Renardo plays in the boundary more than he plays in the field, um, and those are just shorter throws in college football. So that's where the ball goes sometimes. It's also usually where they put the receiver they want to feed the ball to. Um, you know, but I thought Renardo's been a rock for us all year. Um, you know, he had some, you know, even a ball that maybe he gave up on a little bit of push off on a comeback, he comes back on a fourth and four and gets the ball out, you know, and that's been his his season. You know, he's been good in the run game. Uh, we've challenged him in the blitz game and he showed up there too, um, but he's been a really good one-on-one -on -one defender and, um, you know, he's he's come a long way because, you know, he's part of the communication too, but he's also a really good listener, which at corner is usually, that's where you gotta be a lot because of you know, you're pretty locked in and you're so tight to line of scrimmage that you depend on others to kind of give you a bigger scope. Um, but you know, Renardo's come up big. I think he's playing as good as any corner in the country. On the field, the defense is really starting to find its groove. But do you feel, as a defensive play caller, that you're also starting to understand this unit and find your rhythm as well? No, I think I've always understood the unit. You know, I believe in these guys, and uh, you know, I think we've got a good group. Just, you know, we're playing about 21 different players, and I think that's really important. Um, we've recruited to be able to do that. I think that shows up at the end of the game. It shows up at the end of the season. And just their ability to play with each other, you know, not that they ever couldn't, but just the, the, the connectivity of how important it is to, to fit things the same way, to match up the same way. Um, I think it's all, all important. You know, when you go on a, and you're making a plan for each game, yes, let's play this coverage, let's blitz this set, let's do this. Sometimes it's not as drastic as that. You know, sometimes it's just a leverage thing based off of a split or a stance you know, or a backfield set. And I think be able to take those details and, you know, you really see that, you know, and I'm going to credit Jerry and Jones, you know, he's really calmed us down. Um, you know, I think Greedy's playing cleaner football, but, you know, J-Dub's done a really good job of just really honing in on others, you know, and I think he's really helped that, um, that growth in the secondary. Jerry. 
statistically we're seeing the secondary improving over the last few games. On the whole, statistically, the defensive front against the run hasn't been as, as good as I might have expected it would be. Um, is that because of uh, the, the, the way you're playing your scheme, a lighter box, or how would you describe that? Yeah, well, a lot there. I mean, Saturday they had 50 carries for 2.6 yards a carry, so I think that's pretty good. You know, and that was a 51-yard run, too. You take that away, and that's really, I mean, that's as good as you're going to get. You know, so we don't want to give up any yards on any play. You know, so we probably played less light box in that game than we did all year. You know, so just when you look at it, now we didn't blitz heavy that week. Um, but you, know, you look at it, every game is a little bit different. Every play is a little bit specific. And so, you know, I think our D line's pretty good. Uh, man, I can't even, can you even, um, I guess, put into context how different defensive football is compared to like maybe when you played or when you started coaching in terms of the communication that has to happen now on the field? Because it seems like. You almost have to give them some freedom out there because you can't be dictating everything. But is that difficult to give that freedom to college football players? Not really. I think the time you have now between walkthroughs in the summer and the winter allows you to do that. But I think this all started two things in defensive football. One, the tempo of no huddle, volume of plays, right? So yards are going to go up. Um, and then I think the conception of spread football with quarterback as a runner, the read component of, you know, if you ask many offensive coaches, there's no bad plays, right? If you ask a lot of them, right? Well, if this guy does this, we do this. If that guy does this, we do that. And so as a as coaching defense, I think it's important that you make sure you move around those reads, uh, whether that's pressure, whether that's, and that has to be at all three levels, right? Uh, if the corner does this, somebody else has to do something else to take up that void sometimes. Um, you gotta do a good job of self-scouting too, and just make sure that all your looks either look the same, or they're super multiple in a way that you, they can't hone in on things. Um, but the athleticism of defensive players have obviously gone up, I think, because of the space in the game. I don't want to say everybody's gotten smaller, but I think the athleticism, the quickness, because of the amount of space. The field dimensions have always been the same, but the use of the field dimensions have changed, whether that's by formation uh, or it's just by the, the, the read component. You know, it was the zone read play on, and you just read C-gap players. Um, then I can remember when I was at the University of Richmond and all of a sudden Chip Kelly was at New Hampshire and they scored on a play and we realized they ran midline out of the gun and read a three technique and create space there. And that created a different run fit. And uh, so, and then just the bubble, you know, game has showed up, which back in the day it was curl flat, drop back pass. Now you fake the run to make people pull and throw a flat play. So I just think the ability for teams to use all the space. You know, in basketball they talk about spacing. You know, I think football has really maximized that. And so that's really affected a lot of the ways you play coverage and fit the run game. You know, those days of these are my run players and these are my pass players have kind of morphed into each other. And you have to be able to trade jobs at times so that when they're reading a certain guy, it's not, well, when he does this, I always do this. You want him to say, well, I'm going to read him. If he does this, let me read this guy too. And then you want to impact it with the rush, you know, because time is not always on their side, hopefully, you know, and that's why you recruit and develop defensive linemen to create sped up approaches. And then they make mistakes, turn the ball over, whatever it all goes. So um, the greatest thing about this game is just it keeps evolving, you know, and um, you will see some coming up this Saturday. There'll be some under center two back run game, you know, which is some people want to say old school, but that's a different way to create space, you know. Um, but yeah. Good question. Good kind of. <laughs> two, two younger players who had pretty impactful moments on Saturday, Azaria Thomas and, and Byron Turner. I guess what have you seen from them, not just Saturday, but in terms of growth throughout the, the season? You know, I mean, Azaria, he's played, you know, even as a true freshman, you know, we involved him pretty early. Uh, this year going into the season, we knew he was going to be one of our top corners, but we made him the dime pretty quickly, too. And just that gave him a lot of set roles, 
and I think he's done a really good job. I think he's one of the better one-on-one -on -one defenders. You know, obviously I feel good about Renardo and about Fentrell, but you know, Azari goes out there and he battles on all one-on-one -on -one balls. You know, as good as anybody we have. Um, Byron really enjoyed his development. You know, you know, we we usually give on Friday nights. Um, we have our unit meetings and go through the tape and kind of go through the role and 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 I make a extended tape on situations but sometimes we have players get up and kind of talk through um, kind of what their jobs are that week what they're seeing and you know we actually had Byron get up and speak to the defense for the first time in his career and just to see the confidence that he's had to go through to be able to do things like that I think you saw that on Saturday I really think that had something to do with his um, confidence in his play um, but you know he's really found a role and I think we're starting to see him play his best football Two quick ones first. How is Omar Graham's stop not a sack? You know, we just found out. So we ended up having six sacks Saturday. They gave us one more credit. But I, I don't know. Uh, it was a drop back pass. We clogged run lanes. The quarterback, everybody was covered. He ran, and we tackled him behind the line of scrimmage. So I don't know. You'd have to ask the people that do it. Second one, Pitt offensively. You referenced it briefly a minute ago, but what do they do offensively? And they're a little more traditional, like you said. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can see they've they've had, you know, the play caller came from Boston College a couple of years ago. Um, they've had a change at quarterback, but the offense really hasn't changed. Um, you know, it's been a team that traditionally has wanted to run the football and then throw action passes down the field. Uh, you still see that show up. Um, you know, in that Louisville game when they got out on them and and beat them late in that football game. But, you know, it is a little bit of a different offense from a standpoint. You do have more under center, direct downhill run game, and which does help some play action passes. So it's just important that our guys see it the way I see it right now, and that will be part of the week of training and prep. After the game, um, Jared mentioned that he was not feeling he was going as hard as he could. Um, he said he went as hard as he went in practice last week. Um, did you see a difference, and how did that carry over into the game? Yeah, you know, Jared got banged up early in the game, came back. Obviously, he had an impactful game. Um, but I think J Jared's, you know, it, it shows a lot when you have players that no matter success, you know, I mean, you look at the paper, and he's got two sacks, and he's impactful. You know, but that's not really the goal, right? The goal is for him to be his absolute best at all times. And it's one thing that's just for me to say that, but it's another thing for the player actually to listen and look at it through that lens, you know, um, because I would say most of the people would be congratulating Jared on how great of a dominant of a game uh, our team and he had. Uh, but for him to look at it out of a lens of, you know, I have a higher standard for how I want this thing to look. Um, I think that says a lot about him. Uh, it says a lot about the culture that's here and the direction that we're headed. Jerry and I for the last year. Coach, you mentioned you're playing 21 players on defense. You're playing them early and you're playing them often. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, that investment that you make? I, I saw some of the young kids in when you were down by 10 and you're playing them. Can mm -hmm. you talk about that? Yeah, going back to the Duke game. Yeah, And, you know, I think if you're going to, you make decisions coming out of camp, like this is going to be the rotation. Um, number one, you got to recruit. You right? you can't just put guys on the field, because we were here for some other years, we weren't playing that many players. So um, you've got to recruit, and then you've got to develop. And then when those guys are right, and you know they can help you, you've got to be willing to set a plan, and then let the plan work regardless of, as you said, the score. And obviously, in the moment, if it's not executing the way, then you've got to tighten that rotation down a little bit. Um, but this isn't just about one series, one game. I mean, we want to win every game. We want to win every play. We want to win every series. We want to win every half. That's yes. Um, but there's a greater development that goes on here. And I think when players practice the right way, they prepare the right, right way, they do everything we ask them to do as teammates on and off the football field, then the greatest reward they get is out there. When you put them on that field in front of the greatest fans in the country and they get to go play. Um, and then when they do well, the greatest reward is the opportunity to do more. 
And so you continue that, and I think that builds morale is great to have, right? We all, you know, that's a great word out there, but it helps legitimately build your depth. And so now there's competition on Monday through Friday, and that creates your growth. Your growth doesn't happen 12 weeks a year. Now, there are things that happen in the game you can't replicate in practice. The emotions, the, the, the crowd noise, the sudden changes, things like that, you try to replicate. Um, but when your players believe that Monday through Friday is their, or Sunday through Friday is really their growth, that's when you really start to develop the program. And I think, you know, every week's a new week, but I, I do feel good about that mindset within this team. I hope I'm right on this, or it's going to be a dumb, really dumb, a dumber question than usual. Uh, it seemed like you had the three linebackers out there together a, a, a good bit more, it seemed like, in that game. Um, is, that as, is that more challenging than just saying, okay, we're going to play a third linebacker? Does it change everybody's roles? And, and is it something that now that DJ, I guess, and Omar are, are kind of at that level, is that something you, you think you might do more? Yeah, it's something we've done in the past quite a bit. Um, we, you know, in my past, even before here, um, you, you got to have the right three guys, you know, to put out there. Obviously, we've turned more into a more of a nickel team. Um, but typically now, Ira, when you see that, it's usually matching personnel, typically, you know, or it's the situation, you know. But typically, those are two tight end sets or three back sets or, you know, something that we're putting the bigger body on the field. So when you're seeing it now, that's usually the reason why, um, you know, there are things that we practice where we do play some four, three sets to 11 personnel groupings. Um, you know, you just, that takes work too. But I think with where we're recruiting and where we're heading, you, you like to have some of those, you know, the, those positionless players at backer that you can kind of match up in different ways. Um, but again, you just, if the matchup isn't right, then you have to play certain techniques and coverages, then you become, it's easier to plan for you, you know. So right now we're more in a matching the personnel groupings that people are putting out there. Um, but good, thank you. Thanks. That wasn't that wasn't dumb. Appreciate you, sir.